Hey there YouTube, Carlos with a K coming your way. Excited to be back with you today, because today I'm trying something new. I'm actually giving you an inner peek at me working on some of the rifles that I shoot in the division. So I want to introduce my backup rifle for steel challenge shooting, which is a Magnum Research switch bolt rifle in a Wyland modular chassis with a Volkorsen TG2000 trigger and a Tactical Solutions twisted fluted performance barrel. Look from the other side. I do have a lot of experience with the Magnum Research rifle. It's been my primary rifle since 2021. And I probably shot about 40 matches with it. Definitely more than 5,000 rounds. Never had an issue. Um, the only reason I don't use it today is because it had a heavier barrel on it. So today I'm changing out that barrel and I might give Magnum Research another chance. It also was a little bit harder to clean than the rifle I currently use, which we'll take a look at in another video. Let's get started with the build of this rifle. Today I have some upgrade parts that I'm going to take and add to this rifle to make it a competitor to win its way back in to be my rimfire rifle open division gun. So what I have for you today is the Magnum Research switch bolt rifle. You can have your bolt on either side. I choose the left hand rack. I think it's a little bit out of the way for a right handed shooter that you don't have to see it. And when you're holding the firearm in position, you're able to rack it with your left hand, which is already on that side. So it just kind of flows rather than take your finger off the trigger. So a little bit speedier. Both the guns that I run for Steel Challenge both have the left hand um, rack for the bolt. One feature I'm not sure if I like or dislike is the high rail on this particular design. It is built in and it's fairly high up and I usually run a Seymour with a riser which gives me a fairly big difference between the dot and the barrel. I probably have about 35 matches with this one, way more than 5,000 rounds through it and never had a problem with uh, CCI mini mags. One of the neat things about this rifle is the trigger. It's from Magnum Research. I never used it in a match. I replaced it right away, but it does have a bolt catch built in. That's a little different than that, you know, piece we're used to for messing with, with the 1022 design that this thing is pretty smooth in the way it works. Also the magazine release here is, is a little different uh, in this trigger module. Again, I never used it. Um, the square design just didn't work for me too well. Uh, this one came in the Hogue overmolded stock. I did not use this stock either. It's still unused at a match. I didn't like the grip angle here. This really forced your hand to, to cock back and I didn't like the way my finger was positioned on the trigger. So this, this stock just didn't work for me. So to the point of today's sync, I just got a new barrel, a Taxol X-Ring performance barrel. And I figured I'd build back out this rifle with a different barrel. It comes with a carbon fiber barrel that is threaded, but it's heavy. Uh, I'd say this barrel probably weighs about a pound and a half or a little more. Um, and the, the one we're gonna put in from Taxol weighs about 12.7 ounces, I believe. So significantly lighter and should help make sure we get as fast as possible. So the other components I'm going to use is I'm going to switch out the chassis to a Wyland modular chassis. So the, the action will sit in the aluminum frame here, which is extremely light. And then we'll have the buffer tube, which will attach to the frame, uh, which will give us our sock and shoulder rest. And then this is the front grip that mounts uh, here in this little segment to uh, give you that hand hold over the barrel so you don't burn yourself. So we're gonna be using that Wyland chassis as our target destination. And then in this box are all the components to a Ruger trigger. I was planning to send this off to get Cerakoted so I'd stripped it all the way down. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together and probably using it in a match this weekend. So that'll be the build. Let's take a look at this barrel. This is the ultralight performance barrel from Tactical Solutions. Spiral fluted to give it that lightweight, 
in supposedly 12.7 ounces. Um, these barrels use a steel sleeve. I've never had a problem on any rifle with rimfire entering or ejecting from the sleeve themselves. Uh, it's also threaded. get started we need to remove the receiver bolt thank goodness for the magic of editing because you guys don't have to sit here and watch me turn and turn uh, the only thing you need to do besides taking out that one allen wrench screw to remove a, a 1022 style receiver from a chassis is uh, make sure you move the safety to the middle position so it passes through the stock uh, but other than that that's about as hard as it gets. And so what we'll do is, I need to also undo the front of this chassis. So the Wyland has a nice bedding here to make sure that it holds uh, everything securely. And then again, make sure that safety is in the middle position. And this entire assembly snaps in place. But we are going to change the barrel, so it's not time to put that into place yet. Just wanted to kind of tell you how we're going to end up soon. We're going to need to take out these two bolts here, which holds the, uh, the barrel in by that little notch. And I'm sure there's a name for it. And probably in editing, I'll throw it on the screen. And the barrel simply comes out. Sometimes you'll find it wedged in there. That was pretty easy. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and tear this down to uh, take the bolt out. So if you haven't ever taken the trigger out, it's just two pins, push them through. And one of the things I do like about the real Avid mat that I'm using is it does have some magnetized trays for all of the goodies. Uh, so there's your trigger. Uh, the other piece about this trigger is it also has a built-in extract backup extractor into the trigger assembly housing so you don't have all that uh, lever that always rattles around. So interesting design from Magnum Research on this one. So to remove the bolt on this one, what we need to do is remove the uh, charging handle. And that screws into the main bolt. Uh, and then from here, I usually just use a finger uh, to push the bolt all, uh, you know what? Uh, the next stage is to remove the bolt stop. Um, I use the bolt stop from KID. I like the rubber over the metal steel, so I still feel like it has a good solid uh, reverberation point, but it has the rubber. So any 1022 I use uses the KID bolt stop uh, normally. And this design's pretty interesting is that you don't need that Ruger tool. You can simply push it back and you gotta be careful with the spring, but uh, pretty easy to take apart. So, it does, so because the bolt's not there, the spring just kind of sits through and then you wedge it in. Magnum Research bolt, I think it's compatible with any of the others. Um, now that we have the receiver completely apart, it does have some sharp edges compared to uh, uh, the receiver that I normally use on my primary steel challenge gun. Again, this. This is my backup piece. Let's put that barrel in and see how we go. Um, looks like this one's going to be a little bit snugger fit, which is a good thing. And I just want to make sure that they make a solid contact uh, together with the barrel in. And then if you look inside of the receiver itself, uh, you could see the barrel kind of sticking through there.
All right, and this is the Tactical Solution Performance Series fluted, twisted, threaded, 16 and a half inch barrel. Supposedly weighs in at approximately 12.7 ounces, which should give me some good ability to keep that swing momentum going, but also be able to change directions quickly on those switchbacks for Steel Challenge. I'm not going to lock tight it down just yet because I want to make sure the adjustments are right. But I haven't ever had any problems with these backing out on me. Knock on some wood. But that reattaches our new barrel. Now the next thing we need to do is just put the receiver back together. I usually um, kind of set the spring down and then set the bolt on top of it. Um, then it just takes a kind of getting used to to be able to hold it with one hand while you kind of finagle it into the receiver correctly and then once you got it in there I got that right on the first take there we go back in business everything kind of goes back in backwards so the uh, bolt stop and this does have a cleaning hole in the back in case you're wondering so Magnum Research definitely thought of uh, all the things you needed to make the 1022 just a little bit better in this design. Alright, got our bolt stop in. Let's reattach the bolt. Now I have had this come loose on me several times. It spins get loose but I've never had it come off so I don't have a trigger ready to go up to go back in order to put in the chassis yet so I'm gonna pause the video and somehow put this Ruger trigger together really quick I'll be back all right we have assembled our trigger after almost 30 minutes to the to the moment so we can uh, move some of these parts out of the way and let's get this bad boy back together oh we're going to use the same pins that we had in there again these are uh, the kid stainless pins and this trigger group is the Volkortsen TG2000 trigger group I actually run kid components on primary steel rifle as far as trigger components so their trigger group and now that we got it all back together let's assemble it in this wyland chassis and we'll be done with this build i like to give it one good tap before i finish tightening it in i don't know why it's just a good luck tap for me Tighten it up. Uh, so we have the first piece of the Wyland chassis installed. Our foregrip here, we're going to slide that over the barrel. I uh, just like to tighten these till they're snug. That's the first two components of it. Give you that good grip. The tool that Wyland sends is simply an extremely long Allen wrench with this ring which holds the buffer uh, in place and that way the pieces all line up. There we go. We got the right side piece up, piece up uh, with the extra cuts here to kind of line up at the top if you have it that way. I'm gonna put it down extra low to start and add on this final piece here. Our trigger installed. The only thing we need is a grip. It's the 
wide and grip that comes with the rifle. that a bit more but the completed rifle back together with our new lighter barrel the magnum research swift bolt in the wyland chassis the only thing we'll need to do is throw an optic on this unit so one of the pieces i'm currently working on is installing the optic now on that build we just did in doing some research it looks like having the optic all the way forward i wanted to know why that was the position that I should put the, the optic in rather than back closer on the rail, closer to my eye. And it turns out it's a perception, like the width of your view that you're able to see with the optic further forward uh, helps you transition better, is the logic behind placing the optic as far forward as you can on the rail. The optic installed, this particular optic is a Seymour with an AMOA dot. The piece I like about the Seymour is you could actually change out the size of the dot and it projects the dot on the glass so whether the sun's coming through the glass or behind you, on some red dots you could see double dots or two, three, four sometimes. Now, that problem doesn't occur with the Seymour. It is a little bit heavier than the other red dots available. Normally I just look through the ring and if the ring's on the target, the dot's on the target and I'm good to go. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed some build time with Carlos. I really enjoyed making the video and I hope to share more of my steel challenge builds with you soon. Thanks and KBA, keep being awesome.